Hello and welcome back to the channel. You join me on day three, riding the long way to Gibraltar. So let's cue the weld intro. My goal is to prove that you can ride the entire world by motorcycle, taken on each country, leg by leg, aiming to store my bike in different locations while needing to fly home, work a full-time job, and of course, look after my amazing family. This is my dream. This is my goal. This is my adventure. So let's go. So my plan today is to go out properly equipped. So I'm gonna try my camel pack, what takes, I have no idea how much water, but takes some water. So to be cheap and save money, there's no way at all in a million years I'd recommend filling up from a hotel tap. But we're in Spain and it's beautiful, and we're in the mountains, so I'm sure it's all good. Let's give this a go. Now with the camel toe field, I get to suck the juices. Mm. Now it's time to get on the road. So the plan for today, this is where we are obviously in Spain. It's gonna zoom probably in for me. So we've got in sort of the mountainy region, but we've got not massively far for the first part, 67 kilometers from our current location. We're gonna literally, this is all I've done, is looked on Google Maps and went, oh, water, oh, mountainy area, and picked the point here. So I don't know if we can actually stop here, but I've put it right at the point, so we should hopefully get this epic, epic sort of water. I'm, I'm sort of thinking waterfalls, gorgeous moment, drone up, looking hot and sexy. That's the plan. Right then, let's get on the road let's get some miles in it should all be in theory beautiful mountainy roads all day that's kind of my plan so we'll see what what the day brings but for at least this next chunk should be proper cool and now having of course the camel toe for the juices i'm pretty fresh i'm pretty good so let's just pack the miles out somehow i'm gonna have to try and figure out if i can push the pipe up the helmet and into my mouth as I'm riding somehow because that would be absolutely awesome right 66 kilometers beautiful Spanish roads let's find out what I've picked <laughs> well, let's hope this is epic and cinematic as I believe it's going to be the temperature it's already roasting and I don't know if this is massively high temperatures but I'm gonna say it's around 40 degrees I've just made that up so it sounds good but it is you want to be in the shade you do not want to be in the sun and you want a plenty of suntan lotion on obviously always pay five dollar and get it massaged in to get yourself protected because it is so hot but beautiful so let's continue let's see what crazy thing i've put on the map what's there but hey back on the road ashworth is good this is going to be awesome Well, we've already hacked down, I think, what, 30-ish kilometres, maybe slightly more, but it's just nice, it sort of reminds me more than anything that when I come into a place like this, it's very Spanish, isn't it? It's a very, very Spanish town, and all the buildings going along, and I go, oh yeah, I'm in Spain. <laughs> it's like, you completely forget as you're just tubing through, doing nice little curvy roads and enjoying it, and then I come into here and I go, wow, Ashworth's got all the way to the south of Spain and it's cool and this is proper rural Spain isn't it because where you'd expect to see when you're a tourist going on holiday all the flip-flop shops with selling inflatables and I generally thought that was Spain <laughs> you come here and you go actually they have none of those things I mean surely they've all got really nice pools and and there must be inflatable shops somewhere but the reality of it is this is what rural Spain looks like. This is proper locals. Look at it, it's cool. Anyway, let's get those last few miles out of the way. Let's see what I've done with the map and let's make it epic. Well, we've arrived at the pin I dropped on the map with the epic water. Now, the thing of it is, <laughs> we've come, you know, 60 odd kilometers just for this moment. Because obviously all the heat wave side of things in the country and it's so hot they're saying keep out of the sun and don't be in direct sunlight, exactly what I'm doing, what you shouldn't be doing. 
The thing of it is, I think it's dried up. I think the entire whole massive lake, because it should have had like mountain, this is what I had pictured at least, waterfalls coming down, because it looks like a massive area. And I thought, get right into the mountains, right where the rocks are. And at the end of the day, we'll get this beautiful cinematic. Well, it's not that rocky, and I think it's dried up. I think. So I'm going to send the drone up. We'll make it cool regardless, and we'll see if we can find water, because then we could potentially head to water. Mine and Paul's bike is down to its final bar of fuel. We are in literally the middle of nowhere. We haven't passed a vehicle in probably over half an hour. Um, but I do have backup fuel, so we should be good. If not, I'll fill mine up and leave Paul behind. It'll be fine. Right, let's send up the drone. So I'm sure that you will agree that that's, it's quite magical, isn't it? Seeing the river sort of all dried up in the bed. There's something about it. It's like almost like very Marsy, but there was water far away in the distance, but not a lot of it. And I couldn't reach it with the distance that I had to go. But I don't, like I said, something magical about it. Now the plan from here is to go and get some fuel. So we've got no phone signal. So we're going to head up into wherever the mountains and keep going until we get phone signal and then go and get some fuel, something to eat and then plan this afternoon and book a hotel as well. And then come up with whatever the hell we're going to do next. But it brings me to something that I almost completely forgotten about because it was hiding away in my bag. Now, Chris Goff, the man that gave me the Chris Govs, the camel toe and the juices, including also the mesh jacket, he's kitted me out for this weather exactly. And it's been an absolute godsend. But he's also given me something very, very special for the bike. Let me show you and then I'll go through it. So Chris has also sent me this. Now, Chris Goff is like Santa to me now because he keeps sending me little packages and he will send me a little photo over on messenger on facebook and he'll be like there's something else coming in the post and he has kicked me out of all that stuff but this is quite special so what he sent me now inside here this is quite cool let me get my fingers on it this here is a gorilla and this is designed to sort of warn off evil spirits so the little gremlins that get onto the bike that make it break by having this belt on there it's going to get rid of them that means that no more will i have a flat tire no more will parts of my engine start falling apart and making horrible scrapey noise and we have to take it under it's all sorted but it's cool isn't it the gorilla that's going to warn off all the bigs the monkey's got like a big brother that's going to take care of it so let's attach this on the bike let's make sure that the bike now is warning all of them all of the badness off and then we're going to get back on the road so Chris also provided me with a yellow zip tie to match the bike as well. Thinking of everything, Mr. Santa Chris. So this is going to go underneath here so it can freely dangle near my engine, saving me from any of those little pesky, horrible, we're going to call them, I can't say that because I'll get in trouble. What I was about to say, that is. But ladies and gentlemen, that's cool. Right, I've got a knife. I was given back in Portugal, somewhere here, for just this very occasion. There we go. I'm cutting it off with that knife that was provided. I'm not going to cut it right next to it because I can't get in now. I'll sort that out later. But right now, we're sorted. So. Well, we've got phone signal, so we've pulled over. Paul's um, managed to find a, a petrol station around 12 miles-ish away. Um, I'm not flashing yet, so I reckon we'll be good to get there. We're hoping it's open. We're hoping it's all going to work out. That is the nearest one. This is how far we've gone off into this mountain range, this National Park. So let's get some petroleum. Fill up Ashworth, give her her love juice, and then we'll, uh, we'll come up with this awesome plan. So... Paul's phone isn't the brightest in the world. Always oh, pulling in. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Always oh, turning me around. So, um, <laughs> right, after almost crashing and dying into the back of Paul, um, 
Paul's phone's not that bright. So what he's having to do is put his hand over it constantly to see which way it's taking us. <laughs> was quite funny. Anyway, after all that said and done, we are finally going to get some petroleum. 12 miles, it'll do it. The fuel light's not flashing. We're all sorted. We're all good. Let's get a few miles. But what I'm going to do, what I'm going to do to make it a little bit more fun, I'm going to, of course, make it the most cinematic ride ever. Because look where we are. We're in a national park. So let me show you this Spanish national park, Le Pleco de Baraca de Coraco de Colecos, and just check out the stillness of the rose and the beautifulness. So we've managed to find a beautiful, beautiful Spanish village to have some lunch in. Now we've been sat here for roughly an hour with the menu because they're busy inside. It's like they've completely forgotten that we're here. But they did bring us a non-alcoholic beer, what's very, 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 very tasty. Now we've been sitting here having a little bit of a chat and Paul's bike has to go back to, is it Slovenia? Slaville? Sevilla. 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 Sevilla in English. Sevilla in What's a, quite a chunk from Gibraltar. So we've got to be able to get his bike back there. So I've booked a hotel literally right on the outskirts because it's a really busy, crazy like city. So we've booked a hotel on the outskirts with the idea tomorrow that we can drop off his bike. But he also borrowed a bike from somebody else that he broke down and completely destroyed. It was Rob that you would have seen on a previous episode. So now we're trying to figure out because he left it at a garage in the middle of nowhere. He's now trying to figure out how he's gonna be able to get that towed back to Robin Gibraltar, drop off his scooter a load of miles away, and now the bells are going a load of miles away, 
and then get a bus that's going to take eight hours from there to get to Gibraltar. So there's lots of planning going on. But we've booked the hotel and we're going to head off. I mean, it's more, very authentic when you've got bells ringing in the background. But we're going to set off and we're going to get to the hotel next. Well, after a couple of non-alcoholic beers, we're back on the road and we're heading to the hotel. 96 kilometres. And I kind of went into a little bit earlier about um, the reason why we're going to Seville, that I believe it's called. So going back to the actual true story of why Paul came, he, he, he basically... He flew over to Gibraltar, borrowed a scooter from Rob that meant that he could go in and out of Gibraltar and obviously into Portugal. You can't do when you hire a scooter with the idea to meet me at the airport and be my very, very posh, and very executive taxi to my hotel and then take me to pick up my bike in the morning. That was our original, original plan. But what happened was when Paul set off, <laughs> his scooter uh, that that scooter broke down about something like 150 kilometers away from Gibraltar that actually meant that he was stranded on the side of a motorway had to pay something like 170 euros for a toll to get him off the motorway because the police got involved and then after that he got it to a mechanic shop and the mechanic basically said the cam rod snapped and it's it's not worth buying a new cam rod and building it because it's a uh, it's a Chinese bike. I've probably told you all this wrong. Bloody, bloody, blah. blah, blah. Uh, worth more than a bike to fix it. So then, Paul's then tried to contact Rob that he borrowed the bike from. That hopefully we'll see at, towards the end of this series. So he's contacted him. The garage has agreed to store it. Then Paul then got a a lift to the train station, and then from the train station into Seville where he managed to hire a scooter but couldn't cross into Portugal so had to spend the night at, on the border basically in a hotel where I'd booked a room for both of us trying to keep it cheap because Faro is so expensive and ended up in that cheap nasty hotel what ended up costing me more than a nice hotel for a single person <laughs> you couldn't write this stuff so then on top of that he picked that up, I met him, and then obviously you saw the taxi moment in the previous video because we had to try and make it fun and have a laugh about the entire thing. So since then, we've been sitting and having a couple of non-alcoholic beers because we have to plan what's going to happen because we need to get the scooter back to Rob. So now what Paul's done is we've managed for Paul to hire a van from a, one of the big brands. That van that he's going to take into... Um, that van is going to drive from there and drop it off in near Gibraltar. So he's going to pick a van up from Seville, drop his scooter off, go back, pick up Rob's scooter, I'm going to help him put it in the back in the source in crazy heat, soaring heat, and then we're going to then get it back to Gibraltar, drop it off at Rob. Paul's then going to take the van back out of Gibraltar and put, and put it to the place where he can drop it off in literally in Spain, just past Spain. Then he's going to have to Uber it, Uber it back and then hopefully walk over the border in Gibraltar and meet me where we've booked a crazy hotel for us to stay. So it's going to be all mental, we have no idea if this is going to work out and this is all to get this scooter back. So what would is going to cost Paul not a lot of money in regards to Rob being so amazing and lending him a scooter, obviously he's given Rob back a completely knackered scooter and cost Paul a crazy amount of money. But we're all positive and we're having a laugh and we're still going. So the vlog's going to get very, very interesting within the next kind of day or so. We've got a lot going on, but it's going to be good. Right, we've got 94 kilometres, so we're going to smash out the miles now and hopefully get to the hotel. Anything else happens, anything cool happens, I'll be checking back in. Well, I've got to say, I'd come back if anything cool or different happens. The way we're carving through the mountains, going downhill slightly as well, with these massive sweeping bends is something extremely, extremely cool. We are just zipping down and through on perfect tarmac. Yes, there's the odd massive little weird tarmac drop probably because of heat and sink, sinkholes or whatever. But we are just zipping through beautiful, woody, greenery countryside on perfect tarmac. It's just so much fun. Then we literally went from amazing roads, twisty bends, having the time of our lives, to suddenly this. <laughs> this bumpy, 
put on the, can't go quick on it, slightly gravelly road. That was really bizarre. It just literally went from, um, it's almost like you've crossed into a place where they're like, oh, we can do this amazing time. We have a budget, but we've run out of budget. And now we're going to give you this. <laughs> this is horrendous. <laughs> oh, is it even a road? Are we actually on a, pro oh, it's according to Google Maps, it's a road and Google never lies. <laughs> to a rendiness and my whole camera keeps dropping down because it's shaking that much but hey it's still fun and different and I wanted rural Spain this is rural road Spain I suppose wow well we've pulled over for a little bit of aqua after <laughs> not stressful but let me give you a quick 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 example of what we've got but because basically it's red hot this is the gravel that we're going around the bends on we're going along it and it's okay for a second and then out of nowhere you hit that you ready it's not the kind of thing you can go at any speed at but we're still enjoying it, we're still taking it in. We're hiding in the shade for a little bit. A little bit of aqua, a little bit of water, just to freshen up, especially after a couple of non-alcoholic beers earlier. And there's no way that we needed we in the hedge as well. So, bit ropey, and I think we've got this for a few more kilometers, and then hopefully we'll get back on the main road and just hammer the miles down to the hotel. But it is, it's another beautiful, beautiful hot day here in Spain. So let's just keep lacking those, lacking. Let's just keep getting those miles hat. Hotel, more beer. Now this brings me to the point. Now Mr. Dazza, who has been a hero that once upon a time fixed my rear wheel by taking it away and getting it sorted. Mr. Dazza himself has just sent me 50 pounds and buy me a coffee to basically get me gazeboed on beer tonight. So legend, I appreciate that dude because I could do it just chilling out for a good few hours and enjoying a good few beers. We've got a mission, like I've told you earlier, tomorrow to make happen. So I think it's kind of going to be an interesting one. Anyway, I'm going to take some aqua and I will see you hopefully at the hotel. But if not, in a few commenters when something else goes crazily wrong. We've just arrived at our hotel. We kind of made a mistake because we first went to a hotel that looked quite posh on the corner because the sat nav said you've arrived. Walked in going, oh, this is all right. Turns out <laughs> that wasn't our hotel and we were down the road at this one. And I was going, oh, when we pulled up, I was like, that does not look anywhere near as nice as one that we went to. I mean, even when we got there, the door was locked and they had to buzz to let us in during the day. It makes you go, oh, they take security really well or they're worried about things being stolen. So, <laughs> anyway, we managed to check in, and to be fair, I'm massively surprised with the room, and I'll give you a quick tour. So it's cost me, it's 50 euros, about just over 43 pounds. One night, one adult, and you get all of this. First of all, the aircon. I know it sounds daft, but it's actually included, and it's, 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 it's a godsend. It's 40, 
43 degrees outside yeah 43 degrees and because i'm so hot and i'm sweating i'm actually walking around showing you this in my pants so you get a twin bed a wardrobe space massive luxury you think okay that's it but then you realize that you've got yourself a nice bathroom it's not modern by far most sexiest lord in the world we actually get sachets of uh, sachets <laughs> barely nothing of uh, shampoo me in my pants because i'm so hot and i am hot and then um kitchen area so just in case you want to make yourself an entire meal i do not know what this is i do not know this is a microwave so if i have a peasant they can clean for me and cook and and do all this so I, I, I just remember this sofa area to go and chill out a fridge because my water my water in here is i would say it's warm enough to have a shower that is literally how hot that we've been getting Little telly for very small people, or some people with great eyesight, but this is the piece de la distance. This is it. I give you the balcony. The balcony. A massive balcony area. And the best bit of this is, Paul paid extra for a balcony on his booking. I picked cheaper, by three euros, because what I didn't want to do is spend more than I have to, because I generally am like, I've got to make this as cheap as possible. What's hilarious, because I've got this fantastic Bernard Main Road swimming pool over the road in case I wanted to go for a quick dip. But I've got it. This is all my space. All of this for literally 43 quid. I'm standing in front of the aircon unit to call off. Right, this is this time where, thanks to Mr Dazza sending me literally 50 quid on, in, in coffees um, to me to go out and get gazeboed on. So this is the time where I'm going to go and enjoy some serious beer. So cheers, Mr Dazza. I massively appreciate it. I need to find somewhere in the shade, some beers, some glasses of water, cool myself down. What a day. And I can't wait for tomorrow because if it happens like we're hoping it's happened, it's going to be one mammoth crazy day. And it's just me and Paul. That scoot is pretty big. We have to try and lift that into the back of a van, get it back. We don't even know if we're allowed to get into Gibraltar with the van. So there might be a potential it gets dropped off and one of us starts having to push it over the border. It could go mental. So we'll see what happens in tomorrow's episode. I can't wait to see you then. I'm off for some beer. Have a great evening. Ciao, ciao. Au revoir. Muchas gracias, amigo.